All right, there's a sign I made last night. It's not hanging yet, but it will be up there when I'm ready. But I just wanted you to see. I zoomed all the way out. Yeah. So there's the shop. I've, sh I've shown you that. We're attached to some mega old wooden structures. So as I get into the forge, that is my primary concern. I do not want to burn this beast down. In this corner of the shop, I have access into that old facility. And that's why I put this welding curtain up. So I can make sure no sparks get out that way. Fire safety. All right, let's get into the forge As you've seen in uh, previous videos, I bricked the thing in. It used to be uh, an old, somebody asked me. Uh, I don't even know if it's a champion or what it is. Uh, yep, champion blower and forge. Still, Champion Blower and Forge used to be on its own, um, cast iron used to be on its own uh, legs. Built that in, put some stone around the outside to decorate it, and then ran, yeah, I know, only eight inch pipe. I made a, uh, a barrier to go through the wall. And then that comes out, 90s up, above the roof. All right, so the eight inch versus 12 or 10 inch, that was a big question. Um, I, I, I'm okay, I'm okay with the way it works. I bet you the 10 inch 12 would be better. I'm not sure I have so much turbulence of air with the big doors open and the fans going. I'm not exactly sure. All right, what you're looking at here is, is the, uh, the original forge that I built with some modifications. Uh, this bit comes right off. And then this, what I call spark box, is something that I need. Now, the basic layout of the forge is pretty much what you'd expect. I uh, took the cast iron, lined immediately um, around the, the air intake with fire brick and uh, refractory cement. Fire brick around the outside. Originally, this was only this tall. And I was getting good draft when I had a hot fire. But again, with all the turbulent air in, um, flowing around the shop, um, especially when the fire wasn't 100% going, I get smoke out. Um, in this area. So I decided that I punch in a little bit more of an intake so I have a longer area for draft and I put this removable hood on to, uh, to be able to catch that. That works very, very well. I like it. I can take this thing off if I need to to work on odd shaped stuff. Um, stainless steel hood works great and I think it looks good too. Alright, let me talk about my little spark box here. Um, it's made out of heavier steel than it needs to be, but it's all I had that I can make it out of. I have to say my daughter, with her uh, first first use of the plasma cutter, did all the cutting. I welded the thing together. I had to fill a couple of holes, but she did pretty darn, darn well. The concept of the spark box. I start my forge with charcoal. Charcoal sparks. And I'll give, uh, we'll go ahead and start here in a second. You'll see what I'm talking about. I might even make this a separate video. We'll see. Um, I don't want the sparks. I got hundred year old wood. And I got a massive facility next, but I don't want the sparks flying around. I'm terrified of the, of the concept of fire. So uh, I can get the, the fire built, charcoal going, some coal on top of it. I can put this spark box right over it and let that thing go till it's ready to forge, till it's nice and clean, and not worry about any errant sparks. It also forces the draft right up the chimney, which I think works really well. Another nice thing about my spark box is that if I need to leave, or at the end of the day, if I'm quitting and then getting the heck out of here, all I need to do is put that around my fire, and I'm totally secure. So it's like having a, a freaking wood stove or a box stove crown up. So this thing um, is kind of an awkward extra step in the process, but safety. All right, let's go ahead and start the fire. All right, here's the process that I use to get the forge going. Again, this is kind of a new forge to me, so we're both learning each other. I use lump charcoal. I've talked about that before. I have uh, used oh, wow, a big piece. I use just a couple of handfuls, whatever I think it's going to take to get the charcoal to ignite. Dump that in. Or not the charcoal, get the coal to ignite. Um, however you choose to light it, I just brought it over here. I use a propane tank or a torch. You'll start to see those sparks that I'm talking about, and I don't like it, not in this facility. I mean, I'm really actually pretty safe over here. I've done a lot of work to make sure that I have um, 
very little flammable items around. But what I typically do is I get that charcoal going. I turn my little blower on, which I'll show you in a second. I hope I got it going. I think I missed while I was talking. It usually doesn't take much. I let that charcoal cook up just a little bit to make sure that I know it's going to go. While it's doing that, let me show you my blower configuration. All right, a couple reasons that I a couple reasons I bought this forge is I knew I wanted a, a, a little larger working space inside the shop once I got into the shop. Also, I got it because it has a hand crank, and uh, my right arm was doing all the work, my left arm wasn't, so I wanted to definitely have something for it to do. Plus, old school, I think that helps a little bit. However, with anthracite coal, you really need air blowing on it almost all the time. Not all the time, but almost all the time. So what I have is a very small blower down there with some duct work. And to make it simple, I'm just blowing right into the intake hole of the hand crank. And that provides enough airflow for me to keep the coal running. And uh, whenever I need air, when it, let's say I'm going to grind for a little while and I want to make sure that fire stays going, I uh, turn that blower on. Wired that into a switch so I can shut it off and turn it on when I need to. Very cool. All right. So once I know that that uh, that charcoal's lit that uh, enough to to start my coal, if I turn that blower on, you're gonna you're gonna be able to see see all the, the amount of sparks that come out. And some of them do escape over the top. So that's what scares me inside the facility. Maybe I'm a moron, but we are actually starting to get a little bit of a draft now. But we we did, I didn't warm the the uh, the chimney. Plus it's hotter than hell outside. So what I do is I get to that point, let me throw some fresh stuff in there. And then I go ahead, I know the charcoal is going to burn. So I'll throw some coal in and I'll start tucking it around. I got to leave enough air for the, uh, the whole thing to, to breathe. So I tuck this thing into a nice little pile like that. And even now if I turn the blower on, we'll get some sparks that escape. It's not what I want at all. That's where we put the spark box on. And there you have it. No sparks can escape now. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but you're definitely getting a draft. All of that draft is going right up the chimney. And that fire's getting cooking in there. So I really like that modification. I'm not sure how many of you guys have thought of doing something like that in, on your indoor forges. Maybe you're not as afraid of it as I am. If I was in a building by itself out in the field, I wouldn't be nearly as concerned, but get that big old structure there. Plus, in the morning, if I want some eggs or some bacon, I'll have a nice little cooktop that I can cook on. With that blower up there, we're getting everything we need right out the chimney while it's, get, while it's dirty. Once that fire cleans up, we can get to work. While well, I'm out there, I put uh, just 10 foot on, uh, of um, rain gutter on this roof. There's another roof that flows into it, so it's like 20 foot of, of roof catching down into a drain, uh, into a 55 gallon barrel, which I put a bulkhead on there. This line runs into the shop, into the sink, and I also have a spigot here in case I want some water. That's my rain collection under pressure. Alright, this thing's been running cool. for, I don't know, maybe two minutes, three minutes, and we'll go ahead and pull the spark arrestor off. We'll see where we are in the fire. I like to let that charcoal all burn up. Might be wasting a little bit of coal, but I like it to be safe. And there you have it. You got a nice, hot, almost clean fire. Still a little bit of sparking going on. I run the crank here a little just to see that pushes the charcoal out. So, just within a few minutes, you're ready to go. It's up the chimney, no smoke in the shop, and uh, it works really well. All right, it's pretty amazing. It's super hot in here, and I can still—I mean, it's hot, but it's, I can still touch that chimney. But anyway, once I know that fire is where I want it to be, shut the blower down. I take my spark pot out of the way, put my hood on. I can see where it goes. Now we're contained, we're drafting okay, and 
that, my friends, is how I use my new forge. Or how I get it going, anyway. It's party, anyway. Alright, let's get on to some videos where we're making That's something. the forge. Previous video, that's the shop. No excuse to start making money, or no excuse not to start making money right now. So stay tuned, let's get into some projects.